Paul Manafort offered private briefings on the Trump campaign to a Russian oligarch in hopes of resolving a business dispute, a new report says. The dispute erupted as the result of a failed 2008 business deal. Manafort's representatives say the offer of private briefings never materialized. Former Trump campaign chairman Paul Manafort offered private briefings about the campaign to Russian oligarch Oleg Deripaska in hopes of resolving a years long business dispute. Sources told Bloomberg on Wednesday. The dispute stemmed from a failed business deal the two pursued in 2008 involving a Ukrainian TV company called Black Sea Cable, according to Bloomberg. Legal complaints filed by Darai Paska's representatives in the Cayman Islands in 2014 said he gave Manafort $19 million to invest in the company. But the project fell through and Manafort all but disappeared without paying back Darai Pasca. Darai Pasca's representatives were openly accusing Manafort of fraud and pledging to recover the money from him as recently as early 2016, according to the Associated Press. But they reportedly backed off the accusations shortly after Manafort joined the campaign in the spring. Months later, Manafort emailed his longtime employee Konstantin Kilimnok a Russian-Ukrainian operative with suspected ties to Russian intelligence, asking him to tell Darai Paska that private briefings could be provided if he needs. Scott Olson, a recently retired FBI agent who spent years in the Bureau's counterintelligence division, said that offer would have been a counterintelligence flag. By doing so, he shows not only a willingness to give out campaign information he received in confidence but also an intent to earn personal income by selling the briefings, Olson said. The routine briefings excuse is not convincing because he is providing campaign information in exchange for money he will pocket. Spokespeople for both Manafort and Arai Pascal have insisted that the private briefings never actually materialized. But if he did offer privileged campaign information in exchange for debt cancellation, Olson said, that would have raised several red flags for U.S. intelligence officials. First, of course is his willingness to disclose confidential information for personal gain, he said. Second, and of more concern, is debt cancellation is much harder to track than payment. Payments leave a paper trail, debt forgiveness does not. It's a very effective way to conceal transfer of value and is another sea flag. More broadly, Manafort's apparent readiness to trade information for financial gain would have made it easy for Russian entities to infiltrate and influence the campaign, said CIA veteran Glenn Carl. Just through Manafort alone, the campaign and Trump were penetrated by Russian intelligence operations. Carl wrote in an email. He pointed to Manafort's use of codewords like black caviar in the emails he sent to Kilimnok as an example of activity that was likely illicit or intelligence related activity. The euphemisms served to divert, so the Russians and Manafort thought, electronic pickup of keywords in electronic conversations, Carl said. A counterintelligence program is more likely to be tuned to detect money than caviar. Manafort also would have been an easy target, said Navid Jamali, an intelligence analyst who secretly reported to the FBI for four years while pretending to work for a Russian spy. In espionage, when it comes to asset recruitment there are four pillars that motivate spies, he said. Money, ideology, coercion and ego. Jamali said that because Manafort was not paid for his work on the Trump campaign and has a history of doing business with international strongmen, financial incentives would have been the perfect motivator. The New York Times reported earlier this year that Manafort was in debt to pro Russian interests by as much as $17 million by the time he joined the campaign. Thompson Reuters' truly shocking White House special counsel Ty Cobb told Bloomberg shortly after news broke of the proposal of private briefings that it would be truly shocking if he, Manafort, tried to monetize his relationship with the president. Former Trump campaign manager Corey Lewandowski went as far as to say that Manafort should go to jail for the rest of his life if he colluded with Russia. But Manafort's allies have pushed back strongly on the idea that he would have worked with a foreign government to help President Donald Trump win. Paul Manafort is a patriot. He would never work with any foreign power to tilt an American election, 
said Michael Caputo, a Trump campaign aide and friend of both Manafort and longtime Trump adviser Roger Stone. Anyway, he was busy cleaning up the profoundly amateurish mess Corey Lewandowski made of that campaign, saving the candidate from imminent doom, a full time plus job even for a global election expert like Paul Caputo said. But man, 